G'day, welcome to another episode of Country Life on the Coast. My name is Sean and on today's episode we're going to try and repair this Westinghouse refrigerator. So what's happened is it's actually the fridge has tripped out the RCD. Uh, the safety switch, ELCB, there's certain different names for it, but it's really called an RCD. And after a bit of hunting and, well, basically just pulling out every plug out of every power point, it's determined that the fridge is the problem. And so then I came and had a look, trying to determine what was actually wrong with it. So this refrigerator, it's a Westinghouse. Yeah, the model is WTM4200WB. So after a bit of research and mucking around with it, I was sort of thinking that the problem was a defrost heater. So initially I tested it doing a continuity test and it, and it works fine. There was no open circuit on it. Uh, and so just to show what the defrost heater is, it's in the freezer compartment and normally there is a cover over this and there's two screws at the top here that you just undo and then pull this cover off and the defrost heater was plugged in up here and it runs down and underneath here so that was what I expected it to be but I couldn't prove it I was trying to work out a way to, to test it that that was the problem and what I found is that in this fridge is there's a defrost timer. So in the fridge compartment on the ceiling here, there's a bit of a hole. And what you can do is put a screwdriver in here. And when the compressor is running, if you twist, basically turn that screw clockwise, that will kick, uh, that will turn the compressor off and turn the uh, the heating defrost element on so when I did that straight away it tripped out the RCD again so that tells me straight away that that was the problem uh, we went to try and reset it it didn't reset which is good so then all I did was disconnected that heater element and the um, and then went and reset the RCD and it stayed the power stayed on so we've been out so we're able to buy a brand new one thankfully locally so now we'll work out how to pull this out pull the old one out and put the new one in and we'll test it So there's a strap just here that's wrapped around the cooling fins and the defrost element that we have to undo to get this old one out. What a mission. So now after a bit of mucking around, oh no there's going to be more mucking around. Okay, some more checking. So what we found, and looking at the new one, this white plug is plugged in. At the back here it was hiding. So it gets plugged back into there, so that was an easy one to unplug. And then the other side of the element actually gets disconnected out of the plug itself. So to disconnect it, there's a little bit of trial and error, but all you need to do is when the white is in there, just put the screwdriver down there to release 
the tab that sort of holds that on and then that just pulls out really easily uh, and there is there is a earth connection onto it as well straight onto there so we'll grab the new one out and start connecting wires so here's the two this one's the old one this is the new one they both have the same looking connections so hopefully they'll plug straight in the end pins here look the same so hopefully that'll plug straight back in and they both have an earth connection point on them as well so hopefully this should be pretty easy to connect back up so we finally got it down and pushed back up into place it took a lot more effort than I was probably hoping but anyway it's sitting back up there uh, the plug went straight back into here without any dramas at all it just clipped straight back in so that was good and the other one just plugs straight back into the white so I didn't show before but this just plugs back up into here uh, we've got our earth connected again so I think we're ready to go and turn it back on and try it out so we've just turned the power back on the lights come on we can't hear the compressor running at the moment but what we can do so we have the light running and if we turn this in here on the right spot just give that a quick turn and the compressor turns on yeah the fan's spinning it's excellent so I'll give it a minute and then we'll do our other test again all right let's do our final test we'll just keep hitting that light switch with my head find this timer thing. so we just rotate this There was the click. So that's the compressor hopefully stopping. And so now that will be on a heat cycle. So I think these run for eight hours on the compressor and seven minutes heat or something like that. I'm not sure exact figures. We don't need to heat it now to do the defrost but the light's still on so when i did that earlier and we were testing it that's when the light went out and it tripped the circuit so the compressor's running again the fan's running it's starting to get cold so what we're going to do is put the back cover back on So this is the cover that we took off earlier that I'd already taken off before I showed you. But it just has a couple of clips on here. Let's sort of um, just clip it into place. And then, like I said before, there's a couple of screws as well. So what, the way I removed it was actually took out the little plug that was in this hole. I just sort of was able to pull it out enough to. Um, dunk. Okay, can't do this with one hand. So there's that back plate back in. Just the bottom I had to actually drop down into a little valley there a little bit. And then put a couple screws back in. A little cover for that. And originally there was probably two covers for the screws, but 
There was only one when I came here. So there we go. The fridge is now working. We worked it out what the problem was and it keeps running. Compressor is running now, which is great. So the fridge should be good to go. That's all we got for this episode. So thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button. That'd be great. And we'll catch you next time. God bless.